This video is going to be an introduction to magnetism. It's video 2 in the topic 9, How Does a Compass Work? So in this video we're going to be looking at magnetism. In order to understand how a compass, such as this one, works, we first need to understand about magnetism. Because a compass is essentially just a small magnet which is free to move and is placed in the Earth's magnetic field. So you're probably aware from playing with the fridge magnets as a kid that some materials are magnetic and others are not. Some materials will be attracted to a magnet and other materials just feel no attraction whatsoever. So let's do a little demonstration here where we'll look at what types of materials are attracted to a magnet and which are not. I'll put my rings down here as well so that we can see if gold's attracted. Okay, so here's my magnet. If I bring it near the copper, nothing. Aluminium, nothing. Brass, nothing. This is a lump of iron. You can see it is attracted to the magnet. See these gold rings, not attracted to the magnet. The steel paper clip, the can opener, the scissors, the nuts, nail, all get attracted to the magnet. So these materials have something in common with each other. So iron, cobalt and nickel are all what's called ferromagnetic materials. Ferromagnetic materials tend to be strongly attracted to magnets. Now why this is is a bit beyond the scope of the course but basically it comes down to the arrangement of the electrons inside these atoms. An atom of iron has an unpaired electron and this unpaired electron in its outer shell acts as a kind of mini magnet inside the iron atom and will try and align that iron atom with the magnetic field. So let's consider what magnets look like inside or at least magnetic materials such as this chunk of iron here. We can imagine this chunk of iron as broken into a whole lot of little domains as shown in this diagram here. Now if there's no magnetic field around then these domains all act as kind of mini magnets on their own and they're all randomly aligned. However, if we bring a magnet such as this one near the iron then the domains inside that iron try to align so up to this magnetic field. Now if I remove the magnet from the lump of iron it tends to go back to normal. The domains go back to being randomly aligned. I can make that less likely or make it at least take longer for those domains to go back to being randomly aligned by applying a very strong magnetic field or by heating this iron while it's in the presence of a magnetic field or by hitting it with a hammer in the presence of a magnetic field or stroking the magnet along the metal will also cause those domains to align for a longer time. So why do the domains align this way? Why do tiny magnets try to line up with the magnetic field? Let's consider why. Now earlier in this course, in the very first topic, we, when we were considering how street lights worked, we considered Coulomb's law, which told us about the forces between charged particles. Now there's a lot of symmetries between how magnets work and how charged particles work. And this symmetry is actually very deeply embedded in the physics. Maxwell showed that electricity or electrical forces and magnetic forces were actually two parts of the same combined theory of electromagnetism, which was a big leap forwards in physics. So these symmetries are important. So let's discuss what some of the symmetries are now. For electric charges, we saw Coulomb's law described the size of the force between two particles, but it also said that if we have two like charges, then they repel each other, 
whereas if we have two unlike charges, then they attract each other. Let's have a look at what happens when we bring like and unlike poles of two magnets together now. What I have here is two magnets. We've got the north pole here and the north pole here. Now let's look at how this magnet behaves when I bring this north pole towards this north pole. You can see it's repelling this north pole. The magnet is trying to move away so that the north poles are not together. Now this is the south pole of this magnet. Let's try bringing the south pole of this magnet towards the north pole of this magnet. You can see in this case they attract each other. Now one important difference between magnets and charges is that we can separate positive and negative charges. It takes energy, we have to put work in in order to separate them, but it's possible. Magnets are a bit different. Here I've got a north pole and a south pole. If I were to snap this magnet in half, then rather than having a north pole on one half and a south pole on the other, I'd actually the end up with a south pole here, north pole here, and a north pole here, and a south pole here. So let's just show that now. Let's snap this magnet in half. And you can, let's now have a look and show that this end here, this broken end, does indeed act like a south pole. So if it's acting like a south pole, then it should be repelled by this south pole here. You can see it is. Here you can see again that the broken end of the magnet is repelled by the south pole. Now a useful way to visualize magnetic fields is by drawing magnetic field lines. We can draw magnetic field lines around a bar magnet like in this diagram up here. Notice that the magnetic field lines are drawn coming out of the North Pole and into the South Pole. The magnetic field lines continue through the centre of the bar magnet. This is why if we snap the bar magnet in half, we end up with a new set of two poles. Now if we want to see magnetic field lines, we can see them by sprinkling some iron filings on top of a magnet. So let's do that now. So this is the north pole of my magnet. I've put a sheet of perspex over the top of the magnet. This is to stop the iron filing sticking directly to the magnet because that is absolutely impossible to get off. So let's sprinkle some of these fine iron filings around the magnet now and see what happens. You can see the iron filings aligning themselves like we drew with the magnetic field lines around the magnet. What I'm not too sure if you can see is that these iron filings are actually standing up coming out of the page as the magnetic field is actually a three-dimensional thing. So magnetic fields are actually represented by the letter B. They're given the symbol B in equations. Magnetic fields are vectors. They've got a direction, as we've shown in our diagram of magnetic field lines. The units for magnetic field are Tesla. So drawing magnetic field lines in this way allows us to understand or at least visualise another important aspect of magnets. As we saw when we brought the two magnets together with their like poles towards each other, they felt a force away from each other and they felt this force even at a distance. 
So in order for magnets to feel forces, they don't need to be touching. That force field extends through space and so magnets can affect each other from a distance. So compasses are just very small magnets which are free to move and can align themselves with the Earth's magnetic field. We're going to be looking at the Earth's magnetic field in more detail in the next video. But compasses were actually discovered a long, long time ago. The first compasses were created by the Chinese in around about 200 BC. They weren't actually used as a navigational instrument until about 1000 AD. But the simplest magnets, or the oldest magnets, were just magnetic minerals such as lodestone and these were put in a situation such that they were free to move so that they could align with the Earth's magnetic field. So let's now create our own very simple compass. So the first step in creating our compass is to magnetise our paperclip. So we can do that just by stroking it against the North Pole for a minute. So this should align some of the magnetic domains in that paper clip so that it's now magnetised. Now the second step is a bit tricky. I've got to float this paper clip on this beaker of water. So I've got to try not to break through the surface tension of the water so that the water can support the paper clip. So let's place it on the surface very gently. And now it's free to move and so it has aligned itself with this compass here. So this compass is pointing this way and this paper clip is aligned itself so that it's parallel. They're both pointing in the same direction. So we've created a very simple compass here. Let's just prove that this isn't just a fluke. If I spin the beaker of water, it caused my paper clip to fall. Let's put another magnetised paper clip on and spin the beaker more gently. You can see it's spinning and then it's spinning back and aligning itself so that it's parallel to this compass down here. And now if I very gently turn the beaker around, it stays pointing in the same direction. And if I move a magnet near it, which is stronger than the Earth's magnetic field, it is attracted to this magnet. So this was a great leap forwards for navigation, because now you could be stuck out in the middle of the ocean, not able to work out where you were from the stars for some reason, maybe it's a dark and stormy night, but you can still work out which direction's north and so in which direction you are travelling. So one relatively recent discovery about magnets has been a new class of magnetic materials that can form especially strong permanent magnets. So what I have here is a stack of ne neobidium iron boride magnets and you can see they are very strong. Let's just put them on the floor and see how far apart we can cause them to feel a force. So these magnets are commonly known as rare earth magnets and you can see they can attract each other from quite a distance away. So for navigation these days, compasses like these ones have been superseded by GPSs. So this is because you can get a much more accurate idea of both your latitude and your longitude
from a GPS system. It can pinpoint your location to within a metre or so. In this video we've seen that ferromagnets are a class of materials including iron, nickel and cobalt that feel a force when placed in a magnetic field. We've seen that it's not possible to separate north and south poles of magnets and we've seen that when we bring like poles of a magnet together they repel each other. If we bring unlike poles together, so a north and a south pole, then they attract each other. In the next video we're going to be looking at the Earth's magnetic field. We're going to be looking at what causes it, how strong it is, which direction it goes in, and some of the interesting phenomena that are caused by the Earth's magnetic field. Special thanks to Sebastian Frick for filming this video.